All right, so energy in an ecosystem. So regardless of the location of the life, you know, be it the deep, you know, ocean or hot geothermal springs, all organisms need a source of life. So ecosystems are linking in networks of nutrient and energy flow and exchange. Almost all of the energy that organisms on Earth rely on is derived from the sun, and photosynthetic organisms can capture that light energy to make organic compounds to be used as energy. The only exception to this would be, say, chemosynthetic organisms, which make these organic compounds just from chemicals available around them. Um, but these are pretty rare. It's usually in the depths of the ocean where there's no sunlight available. So at its essence, light and heat energy are emitted by the sun. The light energy is captured by the photosynthetic organisms like plants and algae, and it's converted into chemical potential energy. The heat also coming from the sun, it, allow, it warms the planet uh, and allows the geochemical processes on Earth to take place, like the tides, the ocean currents and the weather systems. Now, organic compounds are the building blocks of life um, and it, they all contain carbon, carbon and hydrogen. So we're talking things like carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. Uh, anything that does not contain carbon and hydrogen is considered inorganic. So we're talking water, carbon dioxide, nitrogen compounds. So they have to have both carbon and oxygen. Now, organic compounds like glucose, so which is a carbohydrate, it contains really high energy bonds. So when photosynthetic organisms capture the light energy, they convert this energy into chemical energy, like the glucose, and it's the energy that is stored in this bond. So we access this energy by breaking down the bonds and releasing that energy and turning it into something usable, which we can use um, as ATP, right? And we do that during cellular respiration. Now, photosynthesis and cellular respiration are complementary processes. They have reverse products and reactants, but they're different biochemical pathways. So we don't truly call them reverse reactions. Now, photosynthesis is a process of carbon fixing, meaning we're taking inorganic carbon and incorporating it into organic molecules. Autotrophs, which are our producers, they are the organisms that fix this carbon. Okay, They take the light energy and they turn it into the chemical energy. So strictly speaking, uh, these are all photoautotrophs that we are referring to in the chemo autotrophs. You know, either way, they are self-feeding Okay, and they use either the light energy or the chemicals around them. So they're, um, these autotrophs are also known as producers. They are the main source of biomass in a food chain, biomass being the total mass of the living matter in an ecosystem. Now, essentially, producers are creating biomass from sunlight, right? That's it. You know, a few added ingredients here and there, but not all producers are created equal. So the amount of biomass a producer has will depend on its photosynthetic efficiency. So, you know, efficiency will change depending on the amount of light available, whether it's intense light or not, whether it's a certain color of the visible spectrum and what kind of organism it is. Like if they've got quite wide leaves, they can collect a lot of that sunlight. So, you know, if we were, say, covering a particular ecosystem in uh, grass as opposed to, say, trees, there'd be less surface area for photosynthetic light absorption. And therefore, you know, the grass would produce far less biomass because they do not have the capacity to absorb as much light. All right, heterotrophs or other feeders, they are also known as consumers because they, funnily enough, consume other organisms. Now, all animals and fungi are considered to be heterotrophs and they gain organic compounds and therefore energy from all of, from other organisms. Now, these organisms must be able to access the stored energy and the chemical bonds by converting it to a form they can use, So, which is why we do cellular respiration and create ATP. So we have a very wide variety of heterotrophs. Okay. As energy cycles from producers to consumers, it plays a really small role in the carbon cycle. And producers, they fix that carbon into organic molecules and then it's released back as a waste product in CO2 once the heterotrophs consume producers and convert it to their own usable type of energy. So organic compounds will continue up the food chain into different feeding levels um, as consumers eat one another, essentially. So this is our subject matter. Remember, we are jumping across the place. So please be aware when you are doing your readings.